Welcome back to Cord Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of cord cutting, including today, Disney could be taking over the NFL Network, NFL Red Zone, and NFL Plus, to name a few things. We'll tell you what's happening with that deal. Disney Plus and Hulu have surprisingly become profitable. We'll break these numbers down on what's happening. And Hulu Plus Live TV lost subscribers following Fubo and losing subscribers. It's been a busy Disney day, but there's some other news that will come up in a bit. Disney just released their earnings, so we're going to break this all down for you in a minute. First of all, if you want to learn more about these stories, check out the show notes and in the first pinned comment. I'll put a link to each story there so you can read them for yourself. If you're new here, do me a big favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. Let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here so YouTube recommends our videos to more people. With that said, let's dive into it. Oh, uh, Earlier this week, it was reported that the deal that was first leaked months ago that Disney was in talks with the NFL for a deal that would see Disney take over NFL Red Zone, um, uh, NFL Network, NFL.com, and probably the NFL Plus streaming service in exchange to give NFL part ownership of ESPN. This could also see some NFL games, according to earlier reports, be moved to ESPN. No word on that um, becoming final. But now it's being reported that the deal is all but done. They just need to sign it and could be announced very soon. Exactly what that means is we'll have to wait and see. But for now, it's becoming very clear that Disney and the NFL are looking at a joint partnership. NFL Network, um, like all networks, are struggling with core cutting. I'm sure they would love to have move some of that expense over to Disney because Disney already has a bunch of staff. And let's be honest, ESPN is very heavily into the NFL. Seems like a good merger there. Now, Disney wouldn't necessarily be buying the NFL. Instead, they would have a joint ownership deal or, or buying, not buying the NFL, NFL probably Disney may not even have enough money free um, right now to use, but buying the NFL network, Disney would instead probably get a joint venture partnership. We'll see the NFL take part ownership at ESPN and vice versa. We'll have to wait and see what the exact details on this are, but it does not surprise me. I've said this before. Look for a lot smaller networks to try to team up with bigger ones. This is a good example of that happening. The NFL network's not small on its own, but compared to the conglomerates that own things like Warner Bros. Discovery, AMC, Paramount, NBC, Universal, Disney, NFL Network as an independent network doesn't really have the same uh, power as the others. All right, let's keep moving along. Disney Plus and Hulu have become profitable for the first time ever as Disney Plus added 6 million subscribers. I'm trying to dig into this. I have not heard back from Disney. And somebody leave me a comment, let me know. A lot of people are just saying, oh, well, of course they became profitable. They got the Spectrum deal. I don't believe these 6 million subscribers are a part of that Spectrum deal for a few reasons. Number one, Spectrum had 14 million. And if you counted all the TV customers or however many, 10, over 10 million, I think it is right now, Spectrum TV customers. If you counted all of them into this, that would mean that Disney lost, I don't know, four to seven million subscribers, somewhere in that range. Um, this year to just count that. I don't think that 6 million is just because of Spectrum. I don't think that Spectrum numbers are included in this. And I don't think the profitability can be completely explained away on that. I think cost cutting is a big part of that. Disney's cut a lot of costs out of Disney Plus. A lot of people got upset about them canceling programs and dropping content, but that reduces their cost. I think the jump in subscribers, the jump in revenue, their NFL game they did earlier this year, I know it was a sports kind of kids focus, but I don't think you can deny that that may have helped them. Um, I think there's a lot of factors here. A lot of people just want to dismiss this as the Spectrum deal, and I think there's more to it than that. But not everything is great in streaming. If you add in ESPN Plus in the fourth quarter, they actually lost about $18 million. Disney did say, though, by the end of this year, ideally in the um, or this later this year, they'll be able to make streaming profitable even with ESPN Plus. And um, only losing $18 million is a pretty minor loss compared to some of the losses they've done in the years past. In total, Hulu plus Disney plus brought in about 47 million in profit. Be interested to see how this all plays out. Disney, again, is working very hard to become profitable in streaming. And I think that's gonna um, play out in the long run. But that raises a lot of questions about Hulu plus live TV. Hulu plus live TV had over 100,000 subscribers cancel the service, more than added it. This follows Fubo losing over 100,000. We'll uh, be learning some Dish Sling TV numbers. If you're watching this video, that's probably already live. Go over to cordcuttersnews.com to check those numbers. Wouldn't surprise me to see losses there also. Oh, I could be wrong. Things could change. 
A growing number of Americans are moving away from live TV services to only on demand. If you're not a sports fan, why pay for on demand? Disney, Warner Bros. Discovery, um, and Fox are launching a sports service. Why subscribe to Hulu Plus Live TV if this sports service is going to give you everything you want? I think that's a big part of why Fubo is suing them to try to stop this. I think it will have a very negative impact. And it makes me wonder, how long will Disney do Hulu Plus Live TV if it's losing money, if they have other sports-centric streaming services? I don't know. That's a good question. That is a very good question. I'd love to hear Bob Iger answer. I don't think he will. Speaking of Hulu... And I warned you, this is a heavy Disney one because it's their earnings and there's a lot happening here. But Disney and Comcast are still fighting over the sale price of Hulu. Now, control of Hulu did move over to Disney, but the final price has not been fully agreed to. Disney has actually controlled the board seats on Hulu for several years now. Now, late last year, the two sides agreed on a plan. There would be two outside independent companies hired to um, evaluate. One hired by Disney, one hired by Comcast that would evaluate Hulu for the value. Originally, the deal was for $27.5 billion, but Comcast says they believe that the company is worth a whole lot more. Disney hired J.P. Morgan to evaluate their company uh, for Hulu, and $27.5 billion is about the number they came in with, according to several reports from Reuters. Comcast, though, came in from... Um, who was there one? One second. Morgan Stanley came in and evaluate them at over $40 billion in value. So we have a at least $10 billion plus difference here in opinion. Because of that, it kicks off a clause in their contract that says a third-party company is now going to come in and look at both of this and look at Hulu and try to come up with a price for both for the company. Of course, Disney wants to play closer to the $27.5 billion, and Fox, or, um, Comcast wants the $40 billion. Now, again, Comcast only owns part of it, so they're not going to get $27 billion. No matter what, they're going to get a percentage of that. But the argument is over the valuation. So even though Hulu is now owned by Disney and run by Disney, it is not a sale deal with Comcast. They're still fighting it out and working out the deals over there. And last, I think this is the last big Disney story moving on. Disney will be adding ESPN games and shows to Disney+. Plus. Now, this is not a 24-7 feed of all ESPN networks. It will be much like how Max brings sports from TNT and TBS into Max currently. It's the sports and some related content around it. Um, Disney did say this is, will happen this year, and it's the first step in um, ESPN launching their own streaming service later this year, or later next year, but this year... If you're a Disney Plus customer, some ESPN sporting events and shows will come live. We'll get more details about that in the future. I know I'm going to get a lot of questions. That's really all we know right now. More to come in the future. Deal of the day. The Fire TV Cube is on sale. Amazon's most feature-packed streaming player. It's on sale for just $114.99. It's one of the most powerful Fire TVs on the market. Link in the show notes if you want to find that out there. Next story up. Tubi wants to help um, filmmakers and aspiring filmmakers in particular, create projects. They're creating a new studio that will work with a rising um, producers of, fan, of films to help them get greenlit of uh, the projects. It will kind of work on a public fan kind of support system, kind of like a Kickstarter. If enough people back a project, it'll help it get greenlit. Um, Tubi will also work with um, aspiring filmmakers to get one-on-one -on -one counseling, production assistance help to help them make content course hopefully bring some really good content to Tubi that wouldn't have been there otherwise. We'll have to keep a very close eye on this but we can see how increasingly Tubi and others are looking to independent filmmakers to find new content. This new studio is now I've now if you want to take a look at the projects and try to register to vote and support ones you like to see if they can get greenlit and turned into movies check out the links below in the story you'll find a link there to do that. All right, Paramount Plus has started talks with Sony. So last week we heard that um, the deal with Sony and the deal with, um, with Skydance was dead according to Variety Story. Now it's being reported that maybe not so fast, the exclusivity period with Skydance is done, so Sony can now discuss potential offers from other companies. With that, uh, we're going to have to wait and see what um, happens. Now, Sony apparently is going to start official talks for a potential deal with Sony to see Sony buy and become the majority control of Paramount. Now, just because you're starting official talks, you're kind of obligated to do that 
You know, it's kind of a thing in business. Everybody always says, you don't say no until you know all the facts, right? If somebody comes to you with an offer, even if you don't like it, you definitely want to hear everything that they have to say before you tell them no, if you're a smart business person. Now, apparently Paramount may be doing the same thing because reports are that they're not all that interested in Sony's offer, but they're hearing it out. So is it dead or is it not? We kind of have conflicting reports here. Now, if it's dead, there are reports that Paramount is in talks also with NBC Universal to merge Peacock and Paramount Plus. Some people have taken that and said, oh, well, NBC Universal is buying Paramount. No, this would be a streaming only partnership that would see Paramount Plus and Peacock team up to do some type of bundled joint service together to put all their content in a single spot. Don't confuse that with that. So we'll see what happens here. A lot of rumors, a lot of reports from trustworthy sources with it. All right, question of the day. Now, if you have a question for me you want me to answer, leave me a comment, start it off with like a question for Luke so that we can answer it here. Now, if um, again, if you have a question, start with a question for Luke. If I don't answer it, re-ask it, and I may answer it in a future video. Sometimes I've already recorded this video, or sometimes I just picked a different question. I try to answer some in the comments some more, but keep re-asking if I don't answer. Yesterday, we talked a lot about how most streaming services are not profitable. We learned Disney Plus is profitable, ESPN Plus is not. But a question came out for many people. If so many streaming services like Fubo and Hulu Plus Live and others are not profitable, why are they doing it? And this is a long range thing. The answer is simple. They see the writing on the wall that cable television, which has been the gravy train for many um, studios and television companies and more, is coming to an end. While it still may bring in a lot of money for now, in the not so distant future, it won't. At some point, we're already seeing a lot of smaller cable companies shut off TV. We see some mid-sized ones do it. Would not surprise us to see even bigger companies do it in the future. With that, they want to be prepared for that. So they're willing to take a loss now in streaming so that they hope in the next couple of years it'll be profitable so that when cable is no longer profitable, no longer that gravy train it currently is still because the number one way companies are making money still is from cable TV residuals um, and money they get from them. But when that ends, that they have streaming. So it's a long-term play. Yes, I am willing to lose money. Many companies do this. When I started Corker's News, it was a money loser. It was a much later when it became profitable for me. Uh, and that's what Disney and others are doing, is they're willing to take a loss now for the hope that in the future it'll be profitable so that when cable is no longer profitable, they're well positioned to continue with revenue from other places. I hope that answers your question. If you have a question on that, leave me a comment, let me know. Well, that's it for today. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll be back again tomorrow. Thank you for your support. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here, and hopefully we can help you break through from the high cost of television. Take care, be safe. I'll be back again tomorrow.